Paul, uh, we've had various discussions about various ways of improving the industry. And uh, one of the subjects that's been around knocking around for a little while um, relates to the, the timing and, and the, the split times, which I know as a big fan of Australian racing was something you believe in. Yeah. Um, what's your thought process on, on where we should be going on this and why? Well, I th uh, I'm massive for this. Obviously, you know, uh, we're trying to get Lifford uh, back and running up off the ground. And it's something that I've been been investigating, if you like, because I think the more information, the, the, the more that the public believe in what you see in a race card. I think that, yeah, I look at Australian racing quite a lot and they're mad on sectionals. Floyd, they're mad on sectionals. And and a lot of it is is something that I've done, not as interested in is run home times, not like the strength in a more early pace probably than, than anything else. And that is something that now Ireland has, uh, has latched onto where they do a lot of third bend sectionals. But I actually was speaking to Ian Fortune the other day and, and um, they don't, although they show them and display them they don't actually record them uh so that's something that you kind of think well hang on like you you're displaying it but you're not actually recording it and yet the aussies are they're massive and they put it in the in their race cards and they put it in their on their websites and stuff like that so it's just something that i was keen on. obviously there's there's a lot of talk at the moment where you you know display boards timing boards are, here in the uk and that is has been an absolute is in actual fact, it's been pathetic. Uh, the apathy that the GBGB has shown towards it is quite embarrassing, really. And that's what I'm saying is that when when you look at when when you can get a guide from the Australians have got they've got the game really to a T. Listen, you'll always get people, I suppose, in Australia moaning about this or moaning about that, <clears throat> and that's only really to progress things and and make and make things. Uh, improve within the sport but you know i think with ireland now get getting these um third bend splits and within that if you think about it as well and i've noticed this uh after speaking to to ian at drombo park where they're getting where you look you'd, you'd imagine a third bend split they're actually getting a first bend split over the sprint trip as well and again displaying that so that that's good on a race card basis so i think that Really, as a sport, we should be pushing and promoting uh, as much info as we can. And yet, I think in the UK, and I think the GBGB are, 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 are probably responsible for this, there's just zero. The, 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 the bookmakers don't want to give videos. They don't, want to, they don't want to help punters. They don't want to generate interest in the sport. It's, it's like, what can we get out of the sport? And that, that is the most disappointing thing from my point of view. And this is one of the things that I, I really, I suppose I'm keen to, to get to at Lifford is, is how can we get people to want to have a bet on the races that we provide? And, and to be fair, you know, Josh Seeley at, at Swindon has done masses of work to try and improve their safety, to try and improve uh, the way that they uh, give info out. Uh, he's big on social media and he, he went across to, to Lifford for us and, and pulled out some, some improvements that he thought that, that we could utilise. And that's something that I'm trying to follow up now. And I, and I just think it's so important, Floyd. I think, I think to try and make Graham Racing a success, you've got to push it forward. And I've got to tell you, I don't think we do that in this country at all. I really, really don't. No, no, I, I absolutely agree. And, and I think, unfortunately, it's uh, there are people, I'm not necessarily referring to the GBGB, I'm even talking in terms of the bookmakers, that, that you know, that they're kind of frightened to, to give you too much information. I found yeah. it to be true. And to be fair, one of the greatest sort of exponents of that was Gordon Bissett. Because I remember once a conversation about, um, oh, well, you want all races to be trouble at the first bend. And, and I realised, you know, you work with Gordon at, at Labrooks. But Gordon said, no, he said, I want all six dogs to be crossing the winning line together. Yeah. I want everybody that's holding a betting ticket to think that they've got the winner. And to me, if you if you give people additional information, you engender that interest in the race. 
Um, otherwise, why bother? Why give them names? Why, why give them winning times on at all? You might as well just say, well, pick a colour. Exactly. And, and that doesn't appeal to me. There's a certain sort of punter that will play that. They're not playing dogs anyway. They're playing roulette or they're playing something else. We are, we are a sport that relies on people forming an opinion to causing them to engage. And if you don't give them the, the timings that they require, then they just go, well, I've got less interest than, than, than I might have. I just want to take you up there. Um, I realise there'll be a few people that will be listening to this going, Lifford, um, I think we are both in a position to say that an announcement is due shortly. We realise it's gone very quiet. Um, there are reasons for everything that's occurred, but all will become clear fairly soon. Is that fair? Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping so. It's just been a legal process, uh, really flawed more than anything else. There's been a lot of work going on in the background. Um, I, I didn't really want to kind of keep sort of uh, drip feeding information rather than really we just wake. It's been a frustrating time, but I think we're nearly there now. And 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 it's one of those things where you're kind of, like you say, you've probably got me on here because, yeah, I've had a wealth of experience within being a racer manager, with being a punter, with being an owner, with being a kennel and similar to yourself and you think well i've got half a clue and you just see those things and you think you you need to be fairly visionary to say it's not just about sis contracts it's not just about entains it's not just about media rights it's about providing an exciting product for for the public to want to have a bet on and let them have a bet on it and that's why the tote is so i think really really important which kind of brings me to one final point before I let you go. <clears throat> you are a race man, you're a considerable experience. I think I first met you at Rye House. Correct. Um, then obviously moving on and, and to, you know, Crayford and various other places. Um, the one thing that occurs to me, you know, the, the racing manager's job is, in my view, quite a complex job it's for somebody who's dedicated, who understands what they're doing. Would you agree? Yeah, no, there's no no dangers of that. It, it's it's. Um, I mean, you mentioned the, the man Gordon Bissett, and 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 Gordon, to be fair, taught me quite a lot in 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 the the bet the betting industry. It's 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 about the product that you put out there, so that that people can say, yeah, that's a a good product. That's a good betting medium, and there's a lot of. I think the word really is probably integrity. So you've got that trust that, that, that you know that when you have your bet, that form is out there. And that's why I try to put dogs in the right traps. I try to get clean, clean racing. That was the ultimate thing. Uh, and again, you know, people say, hang on, you was at Crayford. But that was what I tried, tried to do. Because Surely that, that, that's the hardest job of all. Is, you know, it's, it's easier on a nice big trap with nice big sweeping bends. But exactly. Like, like Crayford, you have to try extra hard. Surely. Exactly. And that, that was the thing where, you know, I used to, to to take the videos and watch and and the team that I had as well I kind of tried to indoctrinate that into them as well in that it was important to know where where dogs run you know what lanes they run in and that, that was something that that was that was big on my agenda and something that probably uh, Gordon was was big on and yet uh, I, I, I never never wanted to grade a race to be competitive by putting dogs in wrong boxes. It was just, it was just for me, it was just putting dogs in the right traps and trying to get a similar ilk of, of class of dogs together. When you've got a big enough kennel strength, that helps. It's when, it's when you get under pressure with limited numbers of dogs, like we have now, that, that is the thing where, that, that's where I, I do believe, and I'm really, really strong on this, where, why have 14 races? If you can't get 14 races, have 10 and 11. And that's what they do in Australia, Floyd. If they, if generally they have a 12 race card, if they haven't got enough dogs, they'll have a 10 race card and wouldn't, won't bat an eyelid. It's not a problem. They'll just extend the times or whatever they want to do. Whereas we, we seemed, we seem always restricted all the time. Oh, you've got to have this, you've got to have that. But we need, I think we need to relax that. We need to, we need to, Remember that the dogs are animals and they need a rest. And, and a, lot, a lot of what happens at the moment, they forget all that 
And that that's where, that's my big beef, is that you need to treat those grey those greyhounds as animals and not as numbers. And does that require experience? Is that something you could just walk in off the street and become instantly a racing manager? No, of course not. And that's why that's why even when you you mentioned Gordon, I I, I stood up to him uh, because there's a difference between being a media rights company or a bookmaker and being what's right for greyhounds. And when I was when I was at, at Crayford, when those dogs came through the uh, the door into the paddock. I didn't only know their racing name. I knew the kennel name as well. That's how much, that's how seriously I took it, Floyd. Yeah. Because I never for, forgot. And that, that, they're, they're dogs. And, and I know that I, I used to see dogs and I used to see them maybe paddle out the second bend. I think he's a bit sore. So I, I give him a rest. But nowadays, I don't think they worry about that. You need to focus on what you're doing and, and the business you're in. And yeah, yes. it's a betting industry, but it's not, it's not betting at all costs, is it? It's it. There's there's the balance to it, and that that's w- what I f- feel, and that's what I'll be taking to live with me, is that is that you you have to work with your trainers, and and you have to realise that they're they're dogs, and and I've been in dogs a lifetime, a lifetime, and when you see those dogs next to you, I I I know I'm they're not not they're not a number to me, Floyd. So so I think yeah maybe. Maybe that's why there, there have been changes that have been. I don't know. I don't know the ins and outs of, of what's gone on with the changes that, that that have been made, where people have gone, whoa, you know. But there is there is an intensity now where there's too much racing, and people have to hold their hands up and say there is too much racing. So so give the dogs a break. They're the they're they're the the animals that you need to nurture, and that's why you know the ideology. Uh, uh, Lifford is to have 10 race cards. We're not worried about 14 race cards, 10 race cards and twice a week and, and give the dogs the break, give, give the dogs the, 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 the respect that they need basically. Yeah. I think the other thing that you gain is that you actually gain a following for, for dogs. I remember as a kid before I, before I went to white city as, as a kennel lad, I knew every one of those dogs at white city. Exactly. Because they were racing twice a week, and you knew every single dog and what they wanted to do, so you don't actually gain anything by by giving them extra races. That's the thing, Floyd. When when they over race, and uh, and when, when dogs can run every seven to ten days and run a, a a perfectly good race, when you race them every three and four days, you think oh, we won't go around a bend. You, you you think why are you doing why are you doing that? And that that's the balance to it all. That is being a good racing manager is recognizing that that dog needs that little bit of a break. And I think, again, I'm not puffing my my chest out, but that's, I did that automatically when I was at Crayford. I I didn't have to speak to a, to a trainer. I just saw it in my own two eyes. And that, that's why I think these days is it's get races out at all costs. And when you, it's not, it's not good for the sport seeing dogs prop on the bend and, and 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 it, and ease on turns. It's not it's not good. It's not good. But it, it, this is what I'm saying about in Australia. If you haven't got twelve races, have ten. But here it's got to be fourteen races, or it's got to be. And then we're ended up with five dog races or four dog races in some instances. That's not that's not really what you want to promote dog racing as, is it? Surely. No, and no, I, I don't. I don't see the benefit. I don't see that you actually end up in front. I think in the end you just end up people going. I'm not interested in that race. Exactly. Yeah, it it, it actually reduces turnover and interest rather than anything else. Paul, thank you for joining me. As always, it's been brilliant. Thank you.